So today I wanted to do a quick guide on how to make an osu stream overlay. Now before I start, I just want to say that this isn't going to be a tutorial in which you copy every single action that I do and put every single element in the exact same spot. This is going to be a more open-ended general principles kind of guide and I will be showing you the steps and what you should do, but I'm not going to be showing you everything down to a T. That being said, if you have fairly limited knowledge of photo editing software, I don't think this will be too hard to follow, but you might need a basic minimum knowledge about photo editing software in order to follow this. I'm not going to be going into details about what certain tools do or any of that kind of stuff. That being said, let's start and the first thing we're going to want to do is have a 1920 by 1080 canvas size. Now this is the general resolution at what your stream is going to look like. Uh, most people, it will be like this. Uh, if you're streaming on some lower resolution or something or a different uh, ratio, then you can update that to match what you're doing. But 99% of people are going to be using 1920 by 1080. So that's the pixel dimension size that you're going to want. The first thing you're going to want to do is pick a general color that you're going to want for your overlay. Uh, I'm going to be going with a light blue kind of color for this demonstration. And you're just going to want to paint the entire canvas with uh, that color for now. So once you have the entire canvas painted, uh, something I like to do, uh, and this just makes things easier, is to drag a screenshot of some gameplay into uh, the, the canvas. And just uh, this is going to be your gameplay area, what the, the stream sees as the gameplay. So uh, we're just going to want to drag that into a general good area uh, that you like. You can have this in any size or any position that you like. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. Something I like to do is to give this a stroke and you can always play with the color and the size of this, but I like to have mine like pretty bright, like a white and keep this relatively small. You can always change it later depending on what you want. The next thing I usually do is uh, if I have a, a hand cam, I like to add that in as well. And I know a lot of people don't have a hand cam, but uh, if you don't, you can substitute that with something else or just leave this step out entirely. So uh, something I like to do is to drag in uh, just like an image of the hand cam, just like we did with the gameplay, and j just put that where you'd like that to go. So I have mine down in the corner right here, and it has about the same width of stroke as the background. Something you want to probably keep in mind is that you don't want the hand cam uh, blocking certain areas. Like if you add it up here, uh, the score is blocked. You don't really want it blocking the combo down here. That's why I like to put mine in the bottom right because there's not really much going on down here uh, while you're actually playing. And as long as you're not covering up the input keys, then you should be fine. So once you have both of those set, uh, the next thing we're going to do is start uh, changing the aesthetics of the background. So this blue color is now going to come in handy uh, that we chose earlier. So I found this random image. I don't know what anime it's from or anything. Uh, just, just found it on Google. Um, and what you're going to want to do is just blow this up uh, very large. And we're going to want to go and blur the, uh, the image. And you don't want to blur it too much like... Like if you blur it too much, it's just like, like this is maybe the max you should probably go. I mean, it's all personal preference, but uh, I, I like to go somewhere around here where you can kind of see what's going on in the background, but it's not very detailed at all. Once you have that, you're going to want to drag that below the gameplay. And as you can see, it's already looking a bit better. Uh, something I like to do is to just like flip it, something like this. And you can also rotate and adjust the size as well. And uh Generally, just find a, a good pattern background that you like. So now you're going to want to be playing with colors. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can play with this. You can keep your layer mode on normal and turn the opacity down. And that just blends the color with the layer below. Uh, something I like to do is turn my uh, layer mode on overlay. Now, this is going to look weird if you have a very bright color under the bottom, which is why I said you can change this later. So if you make it darker, it should pop out better. Uh, like uh, doing this does that. And so, yeah, we're just gonna wanna play with the colors for a bit until you find what you like. 
All right, so I think this is fine for now. I'm gonna be going with the sort of sky vibe uh, as I'm getting from it. And I think this looks pretty nice. What I like to do is add like social panels at the bottom and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, so you can either use like the, the uh, rounded rectangle tool for this. I'm gonna be using the uh, just normal rectangle because I do have a very geometric, uh, geometric vibe going. You can always round off these corners if you'd like to make it more of a round vibe if you are a bit more van advanced in uh, photo editing softwares. But uh, I'm going to be going with just a normal rectangle and seeing how that goes. So I'm going to be picking white for this. I think white just matches well. And I'm just going to be dragging a white panel down here. It's not anything special. And you can have this uh, just kind of line up with your other... Uh, spacing so you want these to be roughly the same spacing apart the bottom and the sides now once you have that you can just put in some uh, like uh, social media icons uh, so we have like the YouTube icon right here and you can just kind of put your socials in whatever socials you'd like uh, doesn't really matter so I'm gonna be going with a dark color to contrast with the light we have going on right now and which will also kind of complement the dark background that the gameplay screen is gonna have so that's why I picked this kind of darkish gray black color for the icons and we'll be doing the same with the text. Now you're just going to want to put your text in here just however you'd like it and I think I'm actually going to make this box a little bit smaller just because I think it will complement everything a lot better and kind of keep it a little bit more contained because there's a lot of white space in here. When you have all of the elements that are in this like one panel selected, you can, if you're using Photoshop, you can con control G and you can group these layers. And that just kind of like allows you to edit them as a whole, move them around without getting confused on what layers you have. That also allows you to just duplicate uh, the next layers so that you can easily replicate this and then just change the elements on the inside. Alright, so now we have our panels at the bottom, and again, you can change these as you go. Alright, so now we have some panels at the bottom, and you can add as many of these as you'd like, and that would be fine. You can also add a, like, now playing current map down here. You can also have, like, a PP counter. I usually have PP counters on my overlays. But, uh, the next thing I like to do is to add, like, the your name on here somewhere. So, I would put polars on here, and uh, I usually do that, like, right above the hand cam. So you can do this in any way you'd like. Uh, if you're looking for fonts, I will link a website in the description that I use for fonts a lot. It's called dafonts.com, I think. Uh, and it basically just has a bunch of free fonts that you can download for free. Uh, and yeah, it's a pretty cool website. So something I like to do is uh, rasterize the layer that it's on, put it a little bit above the hand cam. And by rasterizing the layer, you kind of just like flatten the whole image so that this little drop shadow isn't uh, separate from the PNG itself. And that allows you to kind of just like take uh, anything that you want and just kind of cut it out uh, of this box. Uh, and then you can see there's a little bit of a shadow left right here. You can just kind of manually go out and fade that out. And so it looks like nice like right here. You can see uh, you just use the brush and just fade that out a little bit. So that it doesn't look bad, but uh, yeah, now uh, when you zoom out, uh, some of the letters are behind the hand cam, and that makes it pop a little bit more. Uh, so you can do that if you'd like. Uh, I usually do that. This is like essentially as far as you really have to go. I mean, from here, it's kind of just personal choice on what you change, and you don't really have to keep following what I'm doing at this point, but uh, I'll show you some things I like to do anyway. So a lot of people want like an anime character on their, on their overlay, so... We could do that if we'd like. Uh, we'll just add like Rem down here. And you can just kind of put her wherever you'd like. Uh, I'm gonna put her over here. Uh, again, a lot of people might want this. A lot of people might not want this. It's all up to your personal taste, uh, what you want on your overlay. I know there are a lot of weebs in the Osu community. Something else I like to do is this background is a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit samey uh, for lack of a better word. So something you can do is uh, go into like the background itself 
uh, below the gameplay, I should say. Uh, make a new uh, make a new layer, and then uh, something I like to do is just kind of make some long rectangles, and uh, I'm just gonna make them white, and we can drag them into any position that we'd like. So I'm just gonna make them kind of just like diagonal, uh, and uh, have them just kind of go across uh, the screen like this so they add a little bit of a division and we can do that uh, at a few spots uh, in the background just to make it a little bit uh, more cohesive and just less bland I should say something else you can do is just add like a small gradient map uh, over the top and set the layer mode to overlay uh, you can go in and change what color you want uh, and this will just add like a little bit of color correction onto everything and make it look a little bit nicer. You don't want to overdo it because as you can see it's like oversaturating everything right now that I have. But for instance something like this we can turn this down to like 30%. And then it just makes it look a little bit brighter and a little bit nicer uh, I, I suppose. Uh, maybe we actually drag that a little bit lower. Uh, Again, this is just some nice little mint touch. You don't really have to do this. But, uh, yeah, so once you got your overlay, uh, by all means, this isn't perfect. And if I was making a overlay for myself or for someone else for real, I probably would do a lot more with it. But just for demonstration purposes, I think this is fine to call this a good stopping area. Uh, now, obviously, there's, like, this gameplay background and stuff. Uh... So this is what it will look like in the in the stream itself, but uh, it's not actually usable yet. So we gotta edit the the template to actually work within your stream. But this is very easy. Um, the only thing this requires is that you select the layer with uh, the the gameplay, uh, and then we'll do this for the hand cam too if you chose that. So if you're using Photoshop, you can select the fill layer to zero, and that will just get rid of like the original. Uh, picture and it also keeps this uh, the box if you added a box um, but uh, essentially what you're gonna want to do is just uh, delete everything uh, that's behind uh, this layer until you have the uh, just transparent image so this is what we'll have uh, now this would work with your stream theoretically and you want to do the same thing uh, with the hand cam so you just want to go to every layer that's below it that is visible and just delete everything from it so if you have this problem with the intersecting boxes like uh, I do here this is a pretty easy fix all you got to do is go to the gameplay layer and make sure you have the layer style rasterized uh, this just means that uh, the entire it just flattens the entire layer so that it kind of separates the layer styling that you added to the original image and when you're have that done you can just kind of go and just delete this uh, manually uh, it's not that difficult of a thing to do also you're gonna want to delete the character if you have one uh, like I do and basically you just want nothing to be inside of these uh, these two boxes right here because that's where your uh, stream elements are gonna go so that's about all I wanted to share in terms of what I wanted to show off in this video. And again, this isn't supposed to be some super in-depth uh, everything you need to do to make an overlay uh, like perfect, but just kind of a general guideline if you wanted to start out making an overlay for yourself and you're not really sure where. I'll have some gameplay in the background uh, that you're seeing right now, uh, what this looks like while you're using it. If you have any questions, ask them and I will answer them if I know the answer. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.